Previously, we defined what a gene mutation was. We said that a gene mutation is basically a change in the nucleotide sequence of our DNA molecule other than genetic recombination. And we said that there are two types of gene mutations. We have point mutations, which are also known as base pair substitutions or base pair mutations. And this was the focus of the previous lecture. In this lecture, we're going to focus on frame shift mutations. Now, frame shift mutations are a result of insertions or deletions that take place on our DNA molecule. Now, let's define what an insertion and what a deletion is. An insertion basically refers to the insertion of a nucleotide base pair or several nucleotide base pairs at some given location on our DNA molecule, while a deletion is the removal of a nucleotide pair or several nucleotide pairs at some given position on our DNA molecule. Now, as we'll see in just a moment, an insertion or a deletion may or may not shift the reading frame of our mRNA molecule. Now, what exactly is the reading frame? Well, the reading frame is the sequence of nucleotides. It's the sequence of codons that is read by the ribosome during the process of translation when we synthesize our polypeptide chain. So let's take a look at an example of an insertion that causes the shift of our reading frame and as we'll see in just a moment this is known as a frame shift mutation so let's begin by looking at our dna anti-sense strand that is used during the process of transcription so let's suppose this is our dna strand the five end is here the three end is here so we have GCG, AGC, TAG is the nucleotide sequence on our DNA antisense strand. Now, when we actually transcribe our DNA molecule, our RNA polymerase reads beginning on the 3 end and going towards the 5 end. So that means when we synthesize the mRNA, we have to look going this way. So the complement to G is C, the complement to A is U, the complement to T is A, the complement to C is G, the complement to G is C, the complement to A is U, the complement complement to G is C, the complement to C is G, and finally our complement to G is C. So basically this is the 5 end of the mRNA and this is the 3 end of the mRNA that is produced during the process of transcription when we transcribe this DNA anti-sense strand. Now, once we actually synthesize the mRNA molecule, we're going to use this mRNA molecule and the ribosomes are going to translate the code, the nucleotide sequence into the amino acid sequence. And the ribosome will use the genetic code, which consists of the 64 codons. So our CUA corresponds to the amino acid leucine. The sequence G CU corresponds to the amino acid alanine and the sequence CGC corresponds to our amino acid arginine. So let's suppose as a result of some type of outside factor we have an insertion taking place. So we have a mutation known as insertion. So basically let's suppose between the 7th and the 8th nucleotide on the DNA antisense strand we insert our cytosine nucleotide. So now our DNA strand consists of 10 nucleotides and not 9. So we have the mutated DNA antisense strand. We have GCG, AGC, TC, AG, where this is the cytosine that has been inserted between the 7th and the 8th uh, DNA nucleotide. 
So let's see what kind of polypeptide sequence of amino acids we're actually going to form. So when this molecule is transcribed, we form this mutated mRNA molecule. The reason it's mutated is because it contains this guanine between the second and the third amino uh, uh, and the third nucleotide. So the G becomes a C, the complement of A is our U, the C becomes a G, the T becomes an A, C becomes a G, G becomes a C, the A becomes a U, and so forth. So this is the 5 end, this is our 3 end. Now when our ribosome reads this mutated mRNA strand, it will use the genetic code, but now because we have a shift in the reading frame, what will happen is the codons will change. So the first codon in this case is CUA. The first codon in this case is CUG. But because CUA and CUG basically uh, code for the same exact amino acid leucine, the first amino acid is not changed. But look what happens to the next. Because we insert this single nucleotide into our sequence, it shifts all the other nucleotides and that changes the codons that are read by the ribosome. So in this case, the second codon was GCU. In this case, because we had a shift in the reading frame, the second codon is AGC, which is different than GCU. Then this one is CGC, but in this case, the third codon is UCG. Now, CUG still codes for leucine, but AGC codes for serine, and UCG codes for serine once again. So these two codons code for the same exact amino acid, and notice that this or this for that matter is different than the sequence given here. We have serine and serine and we have alanine and arginine. So we see that the insertion of the cytosine nucleotide between the seventh and the eighth nu uh, DNA nucleotide causes a shift in the mRNA reading frame. And this in turn changes the codons that are read by the ribosome and this changes the sequence of amino acids that are produced on the polypeptide chain. And this result usually leads or produces a non-functional protein. So we see that any deletion or insertion of a nucleotide that is not a multiple of three nucleotides will cause such a mutation, such a shift in the frame, and such a mutation is commonly known as a frame shift mutation. So we see that a frame shift mutation is caused when we have either an insertion or a deletion of a nucleotide or nucleotides that are not a multiple of three. But what exactly happens if the insertion or deletion occurs in a multiple of three? So let's suppose, let's consider what happens when we insert a three nucleotide sequence into the this DNA antisense strand. Let's see what the end result will be. So let's begin with this DNA anti strand once again. So we have the GCG, AGC, TAG, uh, 5 to 3 DNA anti strand. If we transcribe this, we produce this same mRNA. And when we translate the mRNA, uh, the mRNA we produce once again the leucine, alanine, arginine nucleotide C uh, amino acid sequence. Now, instead of inserting a single, amino, uh, a single nucleotide, which is not a multiple of three, let's suppose we insert a multiple of three, so we insert exactly three nucleotides, 
the CAG nucleotide between our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the 7th nucleotide on the DNA strand. So we basically insert the sequence CAG. Now when we transcribe this mutated MRR DNA anti-sense strand, we produce so the G becomes a C, the A becomes a U, the T becomes an A, the G becomes a C, the A becomes a U, our C becomes a G, C becomes a G, the G becomes a C, the A becomes a U, the G, C, G becomes the C, G, C. So this is our mutated mRNA strand. And when we actually use the ribosome and the genetic code to translate this mutated mRNA strand, we produce the following result. So the CUA is the leucine, so that doesn't change. But now that we insert this three nucleotide sequence, this sequence, CUG, corresponds to the amino acid leucine. Now, next we go on to GCU, which is the alanine, and CGC, which is our arginine. Now, notice what happened. There's a big difference between this result and this result. So because in this case we had a frame shift mutation because we only inserted a single nucleotide that shifted the reading frame and that changed all the amino acids that were produced after our mutation. But in this case what we essentially do, we do not actually shift the reading frame. What we do is we simply insert a single amino acid in this case but all the amino acids that are produced after the inserted amino acid are exactly the same as before. So we had leucine, alanine, and arginine, and we have leucine, alanine, and arginine. So basically the only difference between the polypeptide chain produced in the non-mutated case and in a mutated case is our single amino acid that is found between the second and third amino acid. All the other amino acids and their position are exactly the same or is exactly the same. So whenever an insertion or a deletion takes place in multiples of three, this does not lead to a shift in the reading frame and such mutations are known as non frame shift mutations because all the amino acids that would be produced if there was no mutation are still produced. And this usually leads to either a fully functional protein or a partially functional protein. And if we compare it to the frame shift mutation, that usually leads to a non-functional protein. So basically insertions or deletions do cause frame shift mutations, but not always. Sometimes they can cause non-frame shift mutations and those basically mean that we do not shift the reading frame of the mRNA molecule, the reading frame that is used by our ribosome. What we basically do is we insert or we delete one or more amino acids, but all the other amino acids basically remain exactly the same. So to conclude, we have two main types of mutations. We have point mutations, which are basically mutations on a single nucleotide, and these are also known as base pair substitutions or base pair mutations. Now, we also have frame shift mutations, and frame shift mutations are caused by insertions or deletions. But even though insertions and deletions cause frame shift mutations, Sometimes they can also cause non-frame shift mutations.